Impotent, Harry and Meghan are exhausted because monarchy's wall is too thick to break. Hello friends, welcome to the breaking royal news about the notorious hypocritical couple Harry and Meghan Markle on our Kate Middleton and the Queen News version 2 channel. Now at the end of the day, a constitutional monarchy is a kind of government. It relies on there being a crown, much less on who actually embodies the crown. Now, the UK attempted a republic for a couple of years, and they decided they needed to bring back the monarch. And then they had a king who attempted to rule as an absolute monarch, and, well, his head ended up being cut off. Personal prerogatives of the monarch have slowly transferred to crown prerogatives exercised by parliament until the UK has reached the position of an apolitical hereditary head of state that also just so happens to be head of state to 14 other Commonwealth realms. Their constitutions must be dismantled as well as the UK's. The main duties of the British monarch are constitutional, ceremonial, diplomatic, and representational. They are also the fount of all honor. But maybe the most vital thing they represent is not so tangible, and that is constancy. The queen has passed away, so now it's time to say, long live the king. And the monarch is not simply the head of state. The monarch is also the head of the nation in a way that a revolving president can never truly be. From royal to UK, the monarch acts as a focus for national identity, unity, and pride, gives a sense of stability and continuity, officially recognizes success and excellence, and supports the ideal of voluntary service. Now, of course, the national perspective is pretty important, and it has been woven into the DNA, and for so many people, the monarchy is an important part of who they are as a British person. At home, people may be English, Irish, Scottish, or Welsh, but at the end of the day, the crown is what unifies everybody, and outwardly facing, they are a united Britain. Immigrants do identify by their ethnicity and their nationality, so they'll refer to themselves as British, Asian, Black British, etc. People may be brown or black or white, but at the end of the day, they are all British, and they recognize their diversity, but they also recognize their unity. Certainly in the UK, there have always been anti-monarchist or anti-royalist sentiments, and they do get increased attention, debate, and support when there's something big going on. Anti-monarchist ideas are political, and they don't have any interest whatsoever in Meghan and Harry. They're basically irrelevant. But there is another group who is very interested in Meghan and Harry, and that would be the anti-royalists. They are very focused on the worthiness of the royal players. According to recent polling, one in five people in Britain are embarrassed by the monarchy. And that's not really anti-monarchist, that's just people wishing they would act right. We could argue that the policy of never complain, never explain is decorum, but it looks like it's not working very well now. It doesn't make any sense to issue rebuttals because they only escalate this war of words and they only throw fuel on the fire. But among the dignified silence that is coming from the palace, the media has been busy spinning some stories from sources, expert opinion, etc. And they present these stories as if they were facts. So if the palace is leaking a little bit of information, then they actually get what they deserve. You know, really, the monarchy should have just let Harry self-destruct because he's doing a pretty good job of it all by himself. We also need to remember that while Charles is the king, he is not the monarchy in and of itself. He's the monarch, but he's not the monarchy. The constitution is predicated on always having a monarch. And there are so many laws surrounding the monarch. There are laws defining who the monarch is, what exactly should occur if they're underage, if they're temporarily indisposed, or maybe even permanently indisposed, and who should succeed them if they abdicate or if they pass away. The monarchy has a line of succession that goes beyond the present incumbent. Charles just needs to get the crown to William without dropping it along the way. Charles is elderly, but William is young and he's so popular and people are very excited about the idea of King William. And the idea that Harry and Meghan could be cause for some kind of seismic constitutional change in the British government is laughable. The British government and the British people are a lot better than those two. And as for them pulling some kind of stunt, well, I wouldn't be surprised if they did it. But if Meghan could not manage to pull one off at the Queen's funeral, then I think the heavy choreography of a coronation is not going to leave them much of a chance. They can just both be shoved behind some really big candles and then be done with it. So some people are saying the Harkles will have achieved their goal to destroy them, and I can't imagine anyone supporting Charles again.
Well, no, I disagree with this idea. They're not going to have achieved their goal, if it's even their goal. And imagining anybody supporting Charles is really not important, even if they did. What would be the point? So let's get the facts straight. Macon and Harry can only destroy the monarchy if the British people allow them to do so. Now, does anybody believe that's going to happen? Let's look at all the things that have happened just recently. Prince Andrew ran around with a young prostitute, and he had that friendship with a pedophile and trafficker, but even that failed to destroy the monarchy. Prince Charles had a long-term adulterous relationship with his now-wife Camilla, and he cheated on his beautiful, fragile, and respected wife, but even that was not enough to bring down the monarchy. Going back a little further, Edward VIII abdicated for his divorcee girlfriend, his American divorcee girlfriend, and even that was not enough to bring down the monarchy. There was also the incident where Prince Charles got some really big donations of banknotes and bags, and even that was not enough to destroy the monarchy. There was the late Princess Diana's bombshell panorama interview, and also the interview that Charles did with Dimbleby, and even that failed to bring down the monarchy. Diana's infamous squidgy gate tape did not bring down the monarchy either, and we can say the same for the incident with Charles and the tampon. The royal family has been rife with scandal for quite some time now. Think about the divorces, the toe-sucking incidents, cash for access, the media stings, uh, sunbathing topless, dangerous dogs, telebiographies, complaints of bullying. None of these, either individually or even collectively, have done anything to destroy the monarchy. So why in the world should this ridiculous book and a couple of interviews from a brat and his manipulative wife be powerful enough to destroy a 1,000-year-old institution? Or is it that they're just trying to kill off a 74-year-old king, perhaps? It's important to realize that there are still some people out there who like Meghan and Harry. I know it's weird and I don't understand it, but it's true. And most people just don't care. Now, if you focus on the people who don't like Meghan and Harry, including me, the feeling of impotence and indignation is palpable in what people are posting online. The desire to see Harry held accountable for his actions is real, but then it ends up getting projected onto people who can make it happen. We feel bad for Charles, Camilla, William, and Catherine, and that's reasonable, and we're angry on their behalf. Now, maybe that's pushing it just a little bit. We are upset at every perceived slight, and maybe people are getting a little too fixated on the whole thing. We want vengeance. We want justice for them. Or is it just that we want them to deliver justice and vengeance for us because only they are capable of doing that? Now, if I had a dime for every time I've read online that the king is weak and if he doesn't do this or that, then not only do I have the answer to the above, but I also have become a very rich woman. The projection is not right, though. Writing up a lot of preconditions and condemning somebody if they don't meet them is simply wrong. We don't walk in their shoes. We don't live their lives. The brat is simply not our sibling. It's not our child. Pretty much all of the Western world can sympathize with Ukraine over what happened with the Russian invasion. And a lot of people out there would be cheering if the USA started a nuclear missile attack and left a crater where Moscow once stood. Justified decisive action cannot be viewed as weak. So it's time for people to stop the calls for the people of the UK to destroy their system of government just because a renegade brat has decamped to live in the USA and throws the occasional hand grenade at his country, his family, and his institution of birth. No matter how much we may despise him, Harry simply is not worth it. And what do you think about the disastrous defeat of Harry and Meghan in the battle to overturn the monarchy? Let us know what you think below in the comments section. We hope you have found this video helpful. And don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back to see you in the next videos. Bye-bye now.